Christ. We believe in the Lord. This church, it's a wonderful day to come and worship the Lord, and also happy Fourth of July weekend. And would you please stand as we sing? From Colossians 1.16, For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things were created through him and for him. of Jesus who died in my place and rose again to forgive me for sin forevermore. So today we have Travis. Yeah. There he is, officer. Good to see you, Travis. Nice to see you. Sir, okay, Travis. Travis, do you believe that you've sinned against a holy God? Yes, I have. Do you believe that God has saved you by sending Jesus to die on the cross in your place? Yes. And will you follow him for the rest of your life? Yes. Well, based on your profession of faith, Travis, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Well, good morning. Uh, welcome to Mount Vernon this morning on this Independence Day weekend. Uh, we are very blessed within our country to be able to worship a God, have the freedom to do it. Uh, and we need to remember that every day and to pray about that. But remember also there are many other countries where they do not have that freedom, and we need to pray for those countries as well. So let's do that right now. Father, we just honor you today. We praise you for the God that you are that has blessed us and blessed our country in so many ways, Lord. Thank you for the freedom that we have to worship your son, Jesus. Lord, ne let us not ever take that for granted, Lord, but to keep, um, keep, keep the, that freedom within our prayers every day. We pray for those countries that do not have that freedom, that in some way the leaders in those countries would recognize that through your son Jesus, they can have true freedom. Thank you for uh, all that you're going to do in our country and in those countries. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Uh, because of the freedoms we have, we can share with others still within our country. And uh, we had a team that recently just got back from New Mexico. And uh, just a brief report on that. We were in Enlow Baptist Camp, one of two Baptist camps in New Mexico. Uh, camp started in the 30s uh, by the WMU, Women's Missionary Union, and Eva Enlow was the impetus behind starting that camp. She and the WMU purchased 88 acres in the 1930s for $4,500 and started that camp. They had a trial run in that camp. Uh, they weren't, didn't have it ready for occupancy, but she wanted to see how it went, so she rented another camp right before Enlow opened. And you'd be interested, in that particular camp, the campers paid $2.50 for a week of camp, plus they had to bring two cans of corn, two cans of tomatoes, uh, a pound of bacon, a box of spaghetti, five pounds of potatoes, a box of oatmeal, two cans of peas, and two loaves of bread. And that was the food that they used for the week in camp. And it's progressed there to the point that now they have uh, several thousand every summer come to the camp. And we served this past week cooking for a couple hundred of those teenagers that came to camp. We had an excellent week. Um, it, was, it was hard work, but it was a lot of fun. And uh, the campers were blessed. There were several decisions and several commitments to ministry from the campers. So thank you for your prayers during that week. But we've got now uh, a couple other teams that are getting ready to go out. So I'd like to bring up the uh, team going out to Alaska. That's this Saturday. If, if you're going to Alaska, come on up. But we also have a, a group that's going to Vietnam to do ministry in Vietnam. That's Friday. So if the Vietnam people that are in here would come forward. And there's some more going to Vietnam as well. So these, these teams are going um, to lead ministry in Alaska. And Kevin and his group has been once, be once before several times to Alaska to work with uh, uh, the ministry there. And the Vietnam group, this is the first time we've sent anybody to Vietnam, so let's uh, send them off in prayer. Father, we love you, Lord. We just, uh, once again, thank you for the freedom that we have to lift the name of Jesus. And we pray for these teams as they go uh, to Vietnam, to Alaska, Lord, uh, that you would give them wisdom that you would give them courage, give them strength, give them boldness, that the name of Jesus would be lifted above all names. Lord, keep them healthy, keep them safe, and bring them back to us at the close of their mission. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Now, Kevin, you, okay, you, you may sit down. Kevin, you might want to talk about uh, just a brief report about your um, camp that just finished. We just took 22 to Virginia. Pardon my voice. I was shouting at camp all week long, and it kind of blew it out. But um, 22 went up to um, Virginia for what's called Go Tell Camp. And at that particular camp, there's a lot of um, preaching and teaching and ministry. Uh, the focus and emphasis is helping young people 
learn to share their faith and to be encouraged to share their faith. It was a great week. A lot of good spiritual decisions made. Thank you all for making that possible. You do that through the budgets we have here, through your prayers, and through sending your, your kids. We want to take more every year as we go. Uh, so be listening for that next year. But thank you all so much for that in group. Thank you all for being a good group this week. Appreciate them. Let's continue worshiping the Lord together. Would you please stand with us as we sing?
What a wonderful day to be able to sing, My Jesus, I Love Thee. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. We have the privilege of having communion with our Lord. What a blessed experience. Now listen, if you're a Christian and say, well, I'm not going to be baptized, you're not a Christian. And if you're a Christian and say, well, I'm not going to have the Lord's Supper, I would question if you're a Christian also. Because there's two things our Lord told us to do. One is express openly before others that we have received the Lord Jesus, and we do that by baptism, and Travis did that today. The other, Jesus did with his disciples as they uh, had the supper, Lord's Supper, and we find that our Lord said, I want you to do this. And in all four Gospels, we find they did that. And so, you know, if you're a Christian, it's important to be here on a day like today and have communion. It's, uh, you know, in our country, we celebrate the 4th of July as a kind of a memorial day, a day we remember some things that happened. Well, in the life of a Christian, our memorial day is continually the Lord's Supper as we partake of it and we remember what our Lord did for us. Uh, we visit regular the cemetery down in Zeblin to, to, in Middlesex where our folks are buried. And it reminds us of them. And we stand there and we, we remember them. Well, friend, our Lord set up something for us. It's not a cemetery because he's not there. It is the Lord's Supper as a way to remember, remember what he did for us. And so that's what we're doing today. Today we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. And we find this is the passage uh, that it's not one of the Gospels. The Gospels have already been given. This is the passage where we find that he is 
Paul is telling us about the Lord's Supper. Now, Paul was not there when our Lord was with the disciples in the upper room. He wasn't there. Come on. Uh, we're talking years later. Now, Paul is saying, I met Jesus. And when I did, he taught me some things. And here's what he taught me, that we're to do the Lord's Supper. He doesn't get it by way of the others. He says, God himself taught me this. And I'm teaching you. You need to do the Lord's Supper. And so we're going to look at Paul as he does this. So if you will, stand as we read God's Word. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26. He's already given about it. And then he, about the cup and the bread. And Paul puts these words, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. That's what we're going to major on today. Until He comes. I've already warned one of our folks that's not here today. I said, you know what? Uh, I don't know if I'll see you again before He comes back. I'm expecting Him any time. Uh, this may be our last one. And the reason it will be our last one is because he comes. And we do it in anticipation of that every time we do it. And so you say, well, when is that going to happen? Because we've been studying a lot in Revelation. All right, would you turn with me now in your Bibles to uh, second, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. Uh, the same writer, Paul shares with us about the coming of our Lord. And it ought to be of interest to us as we do it today and think this might be the last time because he's coming back, all right? But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and who are left until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. You may be seated. So as we partake today, we look forward to a great event that's going to happen anytime. So he says, the Lord taught me this, and I want you to know it. Uh, he, our Lord died and he rose again. Every time we partake of the Lord's Supper, we are declaring again that Jesus died and rose again. Every time we do it. He died, rose again. You, don't, you shouldn't want to forget your parents or others who've died. You want to remember them. All right? He says, what Jesus did, it is so mighty. Do not Forget it. I know we get deep into studies and, and uh, deep things in the Scripture. A and sometimes we get so deep we forget the basics. The basic is this. Jesus died and rose again. Didn't stay dead. We celebrate. Why? Because when He died, He died to pay for our sins. There's a purpose in it. One young person during Bible school asked me, so why did they kill Jesus? I thought, very innocent, good question. The fact is, friend, Jesus wasn't killed. I know we're in a mean world, and people get killed all the time. But Jesus gave his life for us. He's in charge. I, I like reading about Jesus. 
He knows things ahead. He, he told the disciples, you know, when they're looking for a room, he said, you're going to see a guy uh, in a, with a pot, a water pot, and you just follow that guy. When he goes to the house, you say, the, the master wants your thing. And you know, the disciples, I'm sure they went, how is it Jesus knows what's going to happen ahead? He does. He knows everything ahead. He's got that knowledge. And he knew about us, cared for us, loved us, and said, look, I am paying for your sins on the cross. I'm doing it. Nobody's killing me. I'm doing it voluntarily. And the power of it is when he rose from the dead, we realize, wow, that is big. And so we celebrate it continually, what our Lord did for us. And that's what we're doing today. And he said, I want you to do it till I come. He's coming back. And he's, why would he put it in there? He's letting us know. How often are we going to do this? Are you saying we're going to do this again? If he doesn't come back, we will. Now, if he comes back, we're not going to do it again. But we're going to keep doing it. And every time we do it, we're saying, he's coming back. You say, oh, I remember doing this. Yes, I know you remember it. And he didn't come back. Hey, friends, it's been 2, 000, almost 2,000 years, and the church has continued to do it. All right, we are closer than the last time. What's it mean? When's he going to come? That's a big question. What's it going to be like? Well, we find that uh, in 1 Thessalonians 4, he, he puts this statement, if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, that's the major thing. Believing Jesus died and rose again. Do you believe that? That's the major thing. And you say, well, I, I, what about all this eschatology? Listen, you can get into all of it you want, but the, the basic thing is this. Jesus died and rose again. Do you believe that truth? Now, friend, no other, no other gods have done that. Uh, the Hindus, you know, they have a thousand gods. And I thought it's in interesting over there. Uh, you know, they won't, don't want to offend any god. Uh, but Jesus says, I'm the only god. And I died and I rose again. And there's none other has done that. And he says, if you believe that, okay, here's what's going to happen. So if you've established the fact that you believe Jesus died and rose again? All right, if you establish that, okay. All right, then he says in verse 15, we are not going to have an advantage over those who've died. You see, uh, James, one of the apostles, has been killed. It's on the heart of the church. They realize that Stephen has been killed. There's been a lot of believers who've lived, who served God, and because they loved God, they were killed for it. And they're concerned about him. And so, when, you know, what about, what about James? James was a great man and he got killed. So what's going to happen? <laughs> and our Lord says, you know what? Those who've given their life for Christ, you are not going to have any advantage over them at all. <laughs> you know, they seem to think, well, we're living, so no. No, we're, we're not the big advantage people. He says, I'm going to tell you something. Those who've already died, who've trusted the Lord, they got the advantage. You know somebody that's already died who loves the Lord? You do? All right. All right. They are not at a disadvantage. Not at all. So he, he said, here's how it's going to go. The Lord's going to descend from heaven. Do you remember something about this? In Acts chapter 1, Jesus was with the disciples. He went up into heaven. You remember that? Then the disciples stand there looking up. Mm, you know, that's way up there. Wow, oh, the clouds are pretty today. Wow, isn't that something? And, and the angel says, what are you guys doing standing there looking up? In other words, get to work. He's going to come back just like he went up. I believe it. The Bible says it. He's coming back one day. How's that going to happen? Okay, so Paul shares that with us. He says it's going to come with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God. 
Is everybody going to hear it? While we were training our dog, we got one of these things. You, you press a button and it makes a sound, but you can't hear it. The dog hears it. And so we rarely use it anymore. But every once in a while, our dog has a dog friend, grand friend come over and spends a night with him. And so he starts kind of cutting up like he shouldn't do. I don't want to hear a dog barking at night. So I'll grab that thing and I'll press the button. And I'm usually ill because it's in the night and I don't want to be woke up. And so I press it hard. I know it doesn't do any good. I can't hear anything at all. But the dog hears it. And that satisfies me. He's getting it. He's got the message. When our Lord comes back, Everybody's not going to hear him. You see, it's going to be a sound that only those who believe that Jesus died and rose again will hear. So if, if you decided, you know, I don't believe that. That's really kind of uh, otherworldly. Yes, it is. And if you don't want to believe it, you won't hear a sound. I'll tell you how it's going to go. Suddenly so one's taken, another one's gone. It's going to be happening all. What on earth's going on? You know, I don't know about your house, but it was just two of us in the house. I often lose my wife. Don't know where on earth she is. You know, and, and it's kind of, you wonder, was the Lord coming, took her already and left me? Better not. I believe Jesus died and rose again. Listen, friend, it's going to happen, and if you don't have the belief in your heart, you miss the whole thing. My mother used to say, the rag, bag, rag guy's going to have a wonderful day picking up all the rags that are dropped. We'll be out of here, friend. Is it going to happen? Listen, it's in the Bible. I believe it. It's going to happen. When's it going to occur? Anytime. Anytime. I personally believe it's right before the tribulation. I have friends that believe it's in the middle of the tribulation. I have no problem with that. It's going to happen. And our Lord went on to talk about this. It's going to happen, and we'd be, better be ready. I'm not looking forward to dying. I know a lot of folks are. They say, well, I just can't wait to die. Great, I'm not. Let's just put that off as long as we can. I'm looking forward to the Lord coming back. We have a goal as Christians. It's not death. It's called the blessed hope. It's found in Titus chapter 2, verse 11 through 13. It's called the blessed hope. As Christians, we're doing this today knowing he's going to come back. When? Anytime, anytime. I love looking at the sky and thinking maybe this is a day. All right. He says, live in Titus. Live godly, soberly, live right, live righteously, looking forward to the blessed hope of the return of our Lord. We're to look, looking forward to His coming back. Oh, my daddy and mother were, when mother died, they were, my dad was just really distraught. And I remember asking him, I said, Dad, you knew she was going to die. Why? Why are you so upset? He said, you know what? We never thought we'd die. And I said, why not? Because we knew the Lord was coming back, and that's what we were looking forward to, going together. Friend, that's the way we're to live. Live expecting the Lord to come back. Don't live so well. Maybe this is a week I'll die. No, quit living like that. Live. Maybe this is a week he'll come back. Looking forward to the blessed hope of the Lord's return. That's our goal. Jesus talked about it all through the scripture. He said, you know, one's going to be working, one's taking the other. One's going to be in the field. One's taking the others. He said, be ready. Watch. 
Be ready. You don't know when it's... He said, I'll come as a thief in the night. When's our Lord coming? Our Lord told us, I'm coming back. And we're finishing up Revelation, and we are, uh, the Lord willing, and the Lord staying, we will finish around August the 1st, Sunday. And you know what we're going to get to? The very last words that Jesus says in the Bible, in your red letters is, I'm coming back. Be ready. Friend, if it's on the heart of our Lord Jesus, it ought to be on our heart. He's coming back, and we can't waste time. We've got to serve Him. We've got to live for Him. I like the way Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, he says, you know what? We're citizens of heaven, <laughs> and we've got a place we're going to. We're not citizens of America. We're citizens of heaven. And therefore, we've got an inheritance with our Lord. Paul said it this way in his last letter he wrote, which is 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. He said, you know what? I've got a crown of righteousness waiting for me. He said, I'm ready to give my life. And, and, you know, I've got a crown coming my way. And he says, you know what? It's not for me only, but it's for all who love the appearing of the Lord. Did you get that? Paul said, I got a crown, but it's not mine only. He said, it's for all who love the appearing of the Lord. Of the Lord. How many have loved the appearing of the Lord? You know what? Scripture says you got a crown. So we're going to do this today till he comes. Maybe today. Maybe today. I'd say it's a good day to partake of the Lord's Supper before He comes. Let's pray. And dear Heavenly Father, we celebrate Your death and resurrection. This today is a memorial to You we honor you for doing this for our sins. We're all just as filthy, dirty rags as we can be. But you loved us and died for us. And said you declare us as clean and pure by your blood. And it be from every kindred, every tongue, every nation. And Lord, we thank you. We give you our life. We trust in you. We do this in anticipation of your soon return. We join John in saying, Lord Jesus, come on. Come on. We're ready. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe you're here today and you're not ready yet. You haven't given your heart to the Lord. We invite you to come quickly while we sing invitation. Maybe God's speaking to your heart being part of this church. You come quickly right now while we sing. Let's stand.
you may be seated. Travis, would you come forward right now? <clears throat> Travis, we want to present to you a certificate of your baptism. Thank you so God much. God bless you, Brother Travis. Thank you. Travis, we're glad to have you. And you got your mother and father and your brother here. Yes. How many do you have here with your family? Uh, probably three. I mean, two brothers, but okay. one's not here. Okay, we're so glad to have you today. Uh, uh, Travis uh, came, his public decision was today when he was baptized, and that's the way it is in the scripture. Uh, when you publicly do it, you do it in baptism. So uh, he's originally, were you born in Burma? Yes. Okay, and so we are so glad to have you here, and you works with Amazon, is that right? Yes. All right, so uh, I, at the end of the service, I, I'm, you see where he's going to go see? I want you all to go get him and shake his hand, all right? We, we're going to end as we usually do with, with communion, but I don't want you all to miss you. I'm going to give you right hand of fellowship. That means you're my brother. Okay. It means we're going to see each other forever, brother. Yeah. Okay? Same. God bless you. So, all right, y'all watch where he goes to sit, and you go get him after service. Speak to him, all right? God bless yeah. you, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. All right, we're going to ask if our deacons will come now for... If you've invited Christ and Jesus to live in your heart, you know, we welcome you to be a part of this time. Um, we've tried to make it as safe as possible for you. We're going back to a traditional way of doing it. And so uh, the cups are spread apart so you can get yours without touching another. <laughs> They've laid the uh, bread out so that it's spread out so you can get yours and slide it like this. Um, but there's an impossible that I, I told them, you know, some of us shake. So there's no way that we can keep it, but, but do your best, all right? And our time here is to remember the Lord Jesus, when with his disciples, he took the bread, broke it, and said, this is my body, which is given for you. And then he took the cup, and he blessed it and said, this is a new covenant in my blood for you. That blood was paid the price of our sins. So I'm going to ask Ken, would you lead us in prayer, remembering the body of the Lord? And uh, Brother Rodney, would you uh, use the mic and remember the blood of Jesus? Heavenly Father, Lord, as we uh, come to you now uh, during this really a sacred time, as we do uh, give remembrance to uh, the death and the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And, uh, Father, we just uh, pray now that you would uh, take our hearts and, uh, Lord, cleanse them. Um, we, we're thankful that, that you have cleansed our hearts, Lord, by your blood, and, uh, Lord, that you are willing to, to give your, your life, your body, and uh, your body was broken as the bread we're about to partake of was broken. And, uh, Lord, we just thank you for that love. Just pray now that as we do take in uh, this communion, Lord, that we would rejoice knowing that not only you died for our sins, but you rose again victorious uh, so that we can have life. And, Lord, we want to proclaim that life uh, not only through our lives, but uh, to all those that are about us, that there is hope in Jesus Christ. Lord, we come to you today. We thank you for your blood, the blood that was so precious, Lord, that uh, the Father would send you to this earth and to die for our sins. Lord, that blood that uh, can only be the thing that would take away our sins, Lord, you gave it freely. You gave it with you, all your love for us. Help us to understand that and to comprehend and we give you the praise and honor and glory. It's in the precious name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
the deacons are going to serve you now. And if you will uh, probably have to help each other, both are on each tray. And uh, save it, and we'll do this all together at one time.
Jesus taught and then Paul taught, this bread symbolizes our Lord's body given for us. Take ye, eat it. never realized all those years they were slaying a lamb and the blood of that lamb was a covering. It was really pointing to Jesus' blood shed on the cross for our sins. Drink it. stand as we sing. Thank you. You are dismissed.